Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay Huang. Today we are going to talk about primary biliary cholangitis, or PBC, versus autoimmune hepatitis, in a nutshell. Why I think differentiating them is hard, because diagnosis is not strictly based on histology. You have to familiarize yourself as a pathologist with serology and clinical information. There can be histologic overlap. Autoimmune hepatitis can have bile duct injury, and primary biliary cholangitis can have plasma cell inflammation. You can have a PBC AIH overlap syndrome, and you can have an anti mitochondrial antibody negative PBC. A little bit about autoimmune hepatitis. There are two types. Type 1 is bimodal from 10 to 25 years and 45 to 70 years, and type 2 is very young patients, less than 15 years old generally. As mentioned, it's a combination of various histologic, serologic, and clinical features. Histologic, you'll see interface hepatitis, lymphoplasmacytic portal inflammation, and plus or minus lobular inflammation in your zone too. Serology, for type 1 AIH, you'll see anti-smooth muscle antibody, and type 2, you'll have anti-liver kidney microsomal antibody, anti-LKM. It's hepatitis, that hepatocytes are being attacked. That's why you have elevated ALT, AST, then your alkafos. You'll have elevated serum IgG, and you'll have negative viral serologies for hepatitis because you want to rule out chronic hepatitis C and hepatitis A, which can mimic autoimmune hepatitis histologically. Clinically, you want to rule out any history of drug or toxins because we cannot histologically distinguish. And the treatment is corticosteroids, azathioprine, and other immunosuppressives. So this patient is 70 years old, has a history of established autoimmune hepatitis in remission on Imuron, now with normal ALT, AST, and IgG levels, but we're biopsying for surveillance. So we can see some inflammation in zone one or in the portal tracts. And as we look closer, we can see plasma cells, we can see lymphocytes, so generally a lymphoplasmacytic inflammation. If you look at the bile ducts themselves, some of them have lymphocytes, but they're not the primary targets. And a hint that my staff told me for AIH is the plasma cells, it's a soft sign, kind of go or to the edge of the portal tract. And here is an instance of where the inflammation extends beyond the portal tract into the hepatocytes. And this is an instance of interface hepatitis. Now, primary biliary cholangitis. This is a progressive granulomatous destruction of smaller bile ducts to contrast with primary sclerosing cholangitis, ultimately leading to cirrhosis. Demographics is middle-aged women. And again, it's a combination of factors you want to look for to diagnose. The florid duct lesion, which is granulomas destroying bile ducts, bile duct injury, ductal reaction, and lymphohistiocytic portal inflammation. You can, ha you can have plasma cells and eosinophils, but you shouldn't have a lot. Um, later stage, you can have ductopenia because the ducts are getting destroyed. They're being the ones attacked. And the lesions may be patchy and thus absent in a biopsy. In serology, you'll have anti-mitochondrial antibody, but know that you can have an AMA negative PBC, elevated ALKFOS because the bile ducts are being injured, and elevated IgM. Clinically, you want to rule out any history of any drug or toxin use, and symptoms include fatigue, pruritus, xanthomas, and the treatment is ursodeoxycholate and obetilicholic acid. So this is a case of a 53-year-old female with a prior history of PBC with elevated ALKFOS and normal ALT, AST. She has elevated anti-mitochondrial antibodies, normal anti-smooth muscle antibodies, and elevated IgG. Given that there is elevated IgG, there is a question whether there is an element of AIH. So we can see inflammations in the zone one portal tracts. And as we look closer, there are histiocytes. So this is a lymphohistiocyte, predominantly lymphohistiocytic inflammation. However, you can have plasma cells, as we can see here, some EOs. But if you look at the ducts, they're getting attacked by the histiocytes, the lymphocytes. And here's another example of the bile duct. It's hard to distinguish what is bile duct epithelium and what is histiocytes and lymphocytes. And so lastly, just wanted to cover PBC and AIH overlap syndrome. At least two of three diagnostic features of PBC, including GGT greater than or equal to five times upper limit or the ALKFOS greater than or equal to two times the upper limit, positive AMA and a florid duct lesion. And you want two of three diagnostic features of AIH, increased ALT levels greater than or equal to five times the upper limit, serum IgG levels greater than or equal to two times the upper limit or positive anti-smooth muscle antibody, and, and moderate or severe lymphocytic interface activity. And the reference for this article is shown below. Thank you so much for watching this in a nutshell, the differences between AIH and PBC. And we'll catch you on the next time of Pathagonia. Bye.